Free and open source software is in general more secure, more robust and has better community support. You can tailor FOSS software to your needs and you can contribute to a project yourself to make it better. Besides that, you can view the source of this software to make sure it doesn't do anything you don't want, like collecting your data for example. On top of that, FOSS software has one additional benefit. It can literally save you money. First up, what is FOSS? FOSS stands for Free and Open Source Software. Free as in freedom, not as in free beer. This essentially means that the source code of this software can be viewed by anyone, which results in the benefits I already mentioned. To illustrate my point, let's imagine a computer user who knows nothing about free software. Let's call him Bob. When Bob hears the phrase free software, he immediately gets annoyed with the term. This smells of some evil corporate marketing, he thinks to himself. What Bob thinks about is what's called freemium software, which is basically software that seems free, but you're usually the one who is the product. Like, for example, all social media apps. Bob doesn't know that there is a big difference between this freemium software and the software that is truly free. Fortunately, when he is on a trip to Africa, he gets bitten by a strange cow-looking wild animal, GNU. This makes Bob realize that there's been much better ways of using his computer this whole time. The first thing he does is he tries replacing all of his programs with free alternatives. He starts with the programs he uses the least. He swaps Photoshop for GIMP, Premiere for Shotcut and Illustrator for Inkscape. This already relieved him of a $60 monthly subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. He swaps Shotcut for KD in Live after a week, but everything else feels nice. Then he takes a month to get used to these tools and finds they are fit for his purposes. The next thing Bob needs is the office suit. As a Windows user, he heavily relies on MS Office for his work. He then finds a project called LibreOffice. But as he's not young anymore, he finds it difficult to make the transition. Fortunately, he finds a project called OnlyOffice, which, even though it still differs from MS Office, makes the transition much easier. This saved Bob $70 per year. He does some data manipulation, and since he can remember, he's been using MATLAB for this. He finds an alternative called Octave, which is a drop-in replacement for his needs. On further investigation, he then finds Python, which was really easy for him to learn, and he feels better with it all around. With that, Bob saved himself a 119 MATLAB license. Bob also has a granddaughter, which likes to draw and she wants to become a 3D modeling expert someday. This is why Bob has a yearly subscription to SketchUp. Well, next time she visits, there'll be some level of awkwardness since Bob cancelled his subscription because he found Blender. This was another $119 per year. A year has passed and Bob has been enjoying his new setup. Even his granddaughter got used to Blender. Everything is peaceful until Bob comes across an article which talks about something called Linux. Until now, Bob hasn't even thought about using anything other than Windows, but now something in him is telling him that he must try this Linux out. After a long search for an appropriate distribution, Bob decides to settle on Kubuntu. He immediately likes it. Sure, there are some things that are different, but luckily all his favorite FOSS apps are available for Linux as well. And the best part, he saved $139 in licensing fees. On his journey, Bob has saved $258 in total and about $75 in monthly subscriptions. And we haven't even talked about various subscription services which could be replaced with FOSS alternatives. Of course, this example exaggerated things a bit, but my message to you, the viewer, is that you can be the same as Bob only better looking, of course. You can try to replace programs which you pay for with free alternatives. Of course, not everything is as easy as this example made it sound, but even if you replace just one program, that's still a win in my eyes. Another thing I'd like to say is that all of what we said also applies to programs which are free as in free beer, not just open source. But I really recommend you to choose a program which is open source if you can. The reason is that it's much more likely that this program will continue to work for a long time. Even if the project fails altogether, someone will probably stand up and support it. Anyways, thank you everyone for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again, bye!